Well, the first tip of the day is don't uh, wear white pants when you're making ice cream because I already spilled raspberry juice on them. You know, wear, wear something different. I'm Steve Thompson. I'm president of Emory Thompson Machine and uh, welcome to all of you for coming. Uh, it's, it's, it's great fun for Jeff and I. This is Jeff Markow. Some of you know him and runs uh, Mystic Ice Cream and Jeff's business started by sitting right where you are in the audience uh, a number of years ago and he had the same reaction that you'll have by the end of the day is if that idiot Steve Thompson can do this imagine what I could do <laughs> and, and I still get that from Jeff all the time but uh, I, I think you'll have fun uh, you're gonna see just how easy it is uh, I've got an agenda we can pass out and we'll pass them around that way so we're gonna try to make some uh, different things for you today a um, couple of quick ground rules if you have a question, raise your hand right away. Don't wait until we stop talking because we don't even take a breath, either of us. So raise your hand and we'll get to you as fast as we can. It's more important that we answer your question uh, while we're on that whatever subject you're asking about as opposed to you know, waiting till later. Uh, you're welcome, to, you won't hurt our feelings. You're uh, welcome to get up and walk around. Uh, if you want to stretch your legs, if you want to go to the restrooms over there or into the kitchen to get some water, sodas over here. Uh, by all means, just stand up and go. And um, we'll be taking a break for some uh, coffee break and then a lunch break and then uh, we'll be into the afternoon. So, um, Emery Thompson has been building batch freezers for 112 years. My grandfather, Emery Thompson, that was his name. A lot of people think it's two people, Emery and Thompson, but his name was Emery Thompson and he was working in a department store in Lower Manhattan in 1903 um, making ice cream in the department store. They didn't have ice cream parlors back then. You got your ice cream at a pharmacy or uh, at a department store. And um, he did in 1903 uh, $102,000 uh, gross sales, which uh, today is about $1.3 million. So that was an incredible amount. He was using old salt and ice machines. And he went back to his home in New Rochelle, New York and uh, created a better way. He created a mechanized uh, batch freezer. Batch freezer meaning uh, a cylinder. Do I have mine here? Yes. Um, this, this is what Emery Thompson was using. It was an old rock, rock salt and ice machine where you would uh, have a crank and you would have a cylinder. You put the dairy product into the machine with your flavors and you had a dasher. That's an old fashioned term that we still use. The dasher is the thing that spins around. Everybody else, everyone else calls them beaters. But the beaters would turn by the hand crank and in 40 minutes you'd have a quart of ice cream. Well, he was running the whole business like this. So he went back to Neurochelle and invented a modern version of this, which consisted of a long, about a 10 foot long tank and a motor and uh, the tank was filled with ice and salt water. Salt water uh, goes to lower temperatures than fresh. That's why your lakes freeze in the winter but your oceans don't. And he circulated the salt water uh, around the machine and that became the first mechanized batch freezer. It was patented in 1905 and we were off to the races. Uh, when you get up later there's a picture on the back wall of what that machine looked like. And the interesting thing is uh, uh, as you'll hear us talk today, there really is no difference between uh, ice cream and gelato. They're both milk, cream, sugar, and uh, skim milk. And yet the Italians claim that they invented the gelato machine. Uh, but their date of invention was 1919, and we did it in, uh, patented in 1905. So another uh, myth buster that uh, uh, the Italians, did not, they may have invented the product gelato, but the machinery was invented by an American, Emery Thompson. Over the years, we've grown uh, quite large, and we now have uh, five different models and 42 variations of those models. When we build uh, to, uh, we build and sell to 171 different countries, and we actually build the machine to order for that country. But let's get started. I'm going to uh, start off today. I'll pass out my recipe. And a lot of times I make things in these classes that I've never, never made before, which is true of all three of these today, because I want to learn and I want to see uh, what we can do new. So this is going to be a raspberry ice cream with white chocolate. And I will start by sanitizing the machine. 
and uh, we're, we're going to kill any bacteria that might be in the machine from the last time I used it. Just bacteria in the air. It doesn't mean you have a dirty operation. It's just you want to use... Don't use my water. A, a cleaner. Don't use your water. Okay. And what I use is Sterasheen. S-T-E-R-A-S-H-E-E-N. Sterasheen. You can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it from Emory Thompson. There's lots of outlets. Uh, it's, a it's a sanitizer and a cleaner. When you do dairy products, a product uh, a residue builds up on the parts called milkstone. And it's just a hard surface uh, over time. And something like this cleans it right off. So uh, you read and follow the directions, and it tells you how much water and how much sterilizing. It's not, well, they call it sanitized, not it's sterilized. Sanitized. Yeah, it's sanitizing. So it is killing any bacteria uh, that's in the machine. And that's what we want to do. And as long as I don't open up the machine and put my hands inside it, we could make ice cream for the next 18, 20 hours nonstop. Uh, we're going to take a break for lunch today. And even though the machine would be fine because it's under its own refrigeration, I'll re-sanitize before I use the machine after lunch, most likely. Always make sure the gate is closed. A customer called the other day and he said he had dairy product all over the floor and was cursing me out because I forgot to tell him to make sure the gate's closed. So I'm just going to pour this in. Uh, in a pinch, if you're on a deserted island with only you and an ice cream machine, uh, you could use a cap, not a cup, a cap full of Clorox bleach to a gallon of water will uh, sanitize your machine. Won't remove milkstone, but it'll sanitize the machine. However, every once in a while you run into a health department guy and they just get shocked that you have chlorine around. And, uh, you know, absolutely shocked. They can't stand it. And so, uh, you know, I'm from the Bronx, and so I, I'm a wise ass, and I, I tell them, well, what do you think I put in my swimming pool, pal? And that goes over very badly. You know, you cannot even uh, fool around with the health department. So I like the Sterachine because they recognize it. It's, it's known worldwide, and you'll never get in trouble by having it. So I'm just going to spin this. Uh, to get it all over the parts. Now when we make ice cream, I will turn on the dasher spinning and then I'll turn on the refrigeration, the walls of the machine to get that cold. And I'm leaking, thank you. I got it. Um, just hand tight. Now, this pile, when we take the ice cream out of the machine, we're going to turn off the refrigeration and we're going to let it spin to push the ice cream out. The ice cream's thick, it's going to flow out very fast. This is just water. So if I open this right now, the front row is going to get a bath like Shamu the Whale at SeaWorld. So what we do is we turn it off and then we drain it out. That's all the longer this needs. Uh, different health departments have different times. I know that the second Sterachine hits all the metal parts, it's sanitized. It isn't going to get any more sanitized over time. But you have to deal with the health department. Some of them say 30 seconds, some say a minute, two minutes. Whatever they say is what you do. Oops. You think I'm a little organized here this morning? I've got a... Oh, I had... Uh, I, I have done all sorts of fun things on uh, live TV. Thanks. Uh, you can help me here. I can. I can try. So there was a priest, a rabbi, and a <laughs> drunk walking down the street. And uh, There we go. See, it's not that hard. But what about the priest and the rabbi? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to hear that one. <laughs> Okay, so the barrel is slightly pitched forward, so everything is going to drain completely out. That's sanitized, and we don't have to do anything else to it uh, as long as we don't open it up and put our hands in there. So we can keep running all day long. You start with your light flavors and work down. You don't just make chocolate and then vanilla. You'd have to rinse out because of the chocolate. You start with vanilla and then butterscotch swirl, which is vanilla with swirl added on the outside. Uh, strawberry swirl, chocolate swirl, and then you might go to strawberry, and now we've entered strawberries into the machine, Bordeaux cherry, black raspberry, uh, pistachio nut salad, and then you rinse the machine and go to your next group. And rinsing it is just putting some 
uh, warm or hot water into the machine, let it slosh around for 30 seconds, drain it out, and you should be good to go. Did you say pistachio nut salad? Yeah. What's that? You've never made that? Pistachio nut salad? Yeah, that's an old one from about the 70s. <laughs> you know, before your time. <laughs> pistachio nut salad. All right, see, it gives me grief. Uh, okay, let me go get the ingredients which are under refrigeration, and Jeff's going to help me with the chocolate. I'll be right back. You added that stuff. You don't need to rinse that out before you start making a batch of ice cream? No, that defeats the purpose. What, it gives it extra flavor, kick? No, it, it, de it contaminates what you have decontaminated. Also, someone has to eat the decontaminated water. It was, uh, that's the part I was Well, then I'd suggest you don't have any. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, it, it, so you're... Uh, so you're it, watch, it's watch, it's watch, watch, watch. E vap. Po rates. Wow, that's Jeff is uh, Mr. Giadelli's chocolate, so I'm going to let Jeff talk to you about Giadelli while he also uh, grinds it up because nobody runs a, better, a ninja better than Jeff does. <laughs> so there you go. So Giadelli, I came in this morning and Steve said he's going to use some white chocolate, but um, as, as my students know, uh, it, this comes in powder form. So it's simply easier to use. And when I make stuff today, you'll see it in the powder form. But we'll grind his up. Now, you told me to freeze that first so it wouldn't fall Can't apart. Can't away the all the secrets, Steve. You're blowing it here. Sorry. <laughs> These are trade secrets frozen. They won't know. It'll gum up their machine, and they'll come to us for help, and we'll charge them a lot of money for it. Some of these secrets are in Jeff's book uh, that he's put together his incredible recipes into that you can get from Mystic Ice Cream, and we'll, I'm sure we'll show you that later. Now you mentioned about a rinse. Uh, you don't need to rinse if you read and follow the instructions carefully. I'm not very good at reading and following instructions carefully, so I am going to throw a rinse in. Again, health department says, you just contaminated your machine because you put tap water in there. And I go, well, pal, what do you think my Italian ice is? It's tap water, sugar, and flavor. And I get the hammer lowered on me, so again, you can't, you can't argue with those guys. Now, you might tell them that you never do that. Do what? I've never seen you rinse after doing that. Well, sometimes. I don't think you can be wrong. But the easiest way is just follow the instructions. Now, while Jeff's doing that, I want to point out... Uh, You're not going to you point anything out right now. It's going to make a racket. All right, then I'll wait. Look at you that, that's beautiful. You want to put it in here to show? Um, no, I think that's good. Because I have to pour it into the machine, I'll use that. Well, do you want to show them what it looks like? Well, well you call. Go right. ahead, walk them around, I'll do the mix. Okay, so this is it. <laughs> <laughs> that was easy. Oh, that's nice. It's like little granules. Well, there's also, you also get this, the dust. Okay. And if we have a little, uh, no knife, of course. I work under such abhorrible conditions. I know, it's terrible, isn't it? Three and a half quarts of mix. I hope you're hungry today. We're going to go through a lot of products. People start off and say, oh, this is great. I'm going to get three frozen desserts. And by the last thing we make this afternoon, you're going to go, please, no more. I can't take it. Now what I'm wrestling with over here is uh, a blend of milk, cream, sugar, and skim milk. And this came out of the cow yesterday, uh, not as milk, cream, sugar, and skim milk. It came out of the cow yesterday and um, was sent to the dairy and the dairy separated it into the different products and then put it back together to uh, create a certain percentage of fat in the ice cream. The federal government says if you want to call this stuff ice cream, uh, it must be 10% butter fat or milk fat. 
Um, to give you an example, Haagen-Dazs is 16. Uh, many ice creams around the country are 14 percent. And if you don't think that the percentage sounds like much, think of it this way. Whole milk is 4 percent milk fat. Uh, low fat milk is 2 percent. And you know there's a world of taste difference between 4 and 2. Uh, so when we go from 10 to 12 or 12 to 14 and on up, uh, it's getting a lot heavier in milk fat. I didn't say better, it's getting heavier in milk fat. Here in Florida, Jeff and I both agree, we run 10%, the federal minimum. In New York, uh, if, if, if you had a store in New York and I'm opening up a store and your store is selling 14% in New York City, I'm gonna sell 16% just so I can say, I'm the richest ice cream in New York. I can't think of any reason to do it other than that. Uh, haagen -Dazs, is 16%, we put them in business. Ben and Jerry is 16%, we put them in business. And they're great ice creams. But you come down to Florida and you eat a 16% fat and then go out into that <laughs> 95 degree heat and 100% humidity and you're gonna drop dead in the parking lot. And that's not good for business. Uh, so I have seen ice cream parlors from us Yankees coming down here fail because they don't appreciate the fact that you've got to adjust what you're selling to the market you're in. So I find that the 10% uh, is excellent. Uh, I don't think either one of us has ever had a customer walk out of a store and say, oh man, that's the best butterfat content I ever ate. People don't do that. They say, wow, Jeff really uses some great chocolate in his chocolate ice cream. Or I love the, the, uh, uh, the mint that Steve puts into his uh, mint chip. People eat flavor, everything else is balance. Yes? So you're 10% you're using? I'm using 10% here. And Jeff will tell you a story later how he's had people taste it and swear it was 16. Um, it's, it's really good. So I've got my mix, and I'm going to pour this. And it's called mix. That's a terrible term. It makes it sound like it's a powder. Uh, but it is a blend of fresh dairy product, and it was put together by a dairy professional. Someone who knows the difference between a Holstein, a Jersey, and a Guernsey cow, and someone who knows the difference between what kind of fat output do we get in winter as opposed to summer. Uh, we want consistency in the product, so the dairy is going to supply to you with their knowledge a consistent product throughout. We don't want people saying, you know, I really love his ice cream in the winter, but in, in August it's kind of, eh, it's kind of thin. Um, that doesn't happen when you're using a, a, a good certified dairy. So we just pour this right in. And Jeff, I'm going to need some vanilla if you see the vanilla. Jeff's gone. Jeff's gone. I'm what talking do you need, myself. vanilla? No, that's okay, Jeff. I'll talk to myself. Okay, thanks. Um, I'll take three ounces of vanilla if we had an ounce container. I don't need an ounce container. No. Three ounces? Yeah. I'm trying to see if I see something. That's three? That's three. That's a heavy handed three. That's won't me paying hurt you. for the won't vanilla. Hurt you. That's me paying for the vanilla. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put in the vanilla extract. And we can turn the machine on at any time. So that's what can I'm going to do. Pen, a quick pen. Oh, thanks. <laughs> and I'm going to set it for super premium and start it. And I'll explain that in a few minutes. Now it's spinning. Now we're going to start the refrigeration. And we're going to let that run. Now I'm going to put in my raspberries. And there's two ways. Everything. Uh, can the camera see over here, Jack? Yes, sir. Okay. What you see on this table here is everything I bought yesterday at the supermarket to make my ice cream. I don't buy. Uh, let me show you one. I used to make ice cream like this where you would open up, this is called a number 10 tin in the industry. And there are certain flavors that you will do, you could do this way. But this is um, a can of heavy, gloppy strawberries or raspberries <laughs> in a heavy syrup with red dye number 40. And this is the way I grew up making ice cream. This is the way it was all done, and it's still done in most of the commercial ice creams this way. I don't do that. I go to the supermarket, and I learned it from my student, Jeff. He's the one who turned me over to this. Everything you see here was bought at the supermarket yesterday, and all my products are gonna come out uh, from this. So I have uh, a combination, I just wanted to show you there's two ways to do it. Raspberries are in season. 
so I got fresh raspberries. Uh, when they're not in season, I still want raspberry ice cream, so I have a bag of frozen raspberries. These were picked at the peak of freshness. There's no colors or dyes in here. Uh, it's just raspberries. And these are 99% as good as this. But what this means is I can do this year round. Did you find a knife? No. All right, we'll see if the rip top opens. Got it. All right, so I'm gonna put my raspberries right into the machine. You can't do this with other machines on the market. And what it means is I am gonna get all my flavor right in here. If I had to add the raspberries as it was coming out of the machine only, I would have vanilla ice cream with raspberries. But what I have is for every particle of vanilla uh, ice cream, there is a particle of raspberry next to it. So my flavor is gonna be much more intense than any commercial ice cream or any uh, other machine. You'll see them dripping, I, I rinsed these earlier. So I'm gonna add these into the machine. Again, you can't do this with other machines. They'll void your warranty. Uh, they've actually got guards that won't let you do it because the machines aren't strong enough is the problem. Am I missing anything in my formula or is this everything that goes The white down? chocolate. Huh? The white chocolate. The white chocolate, right. We better get there. Now you'll see Jeff does everything. He puts everything in at once and then turns on the machine. Um, I, I tend to do it while it's running because I know in the first few minutes it's doing a lot of freezing but it's not getting thicker yet. It's, it's starting to now. Now I haven't made this before so we're both going to find out how it is. Now the white chocolate. need a spatula. <laughs> good luck. Yeah. We That's don't have good a, as it goes. We don't have a plastic spatula? I don't, I'm working under these conditions. I know. The conditions are tough. Now this is good. I'm going to show you something. Um, I waited I spent so much time talking, I spent a little too much time talking, and it's already freezing, and so it's freezing up and there's not room to get the product in. If you just open that and close it briefly, you make a little hole in the product, and you can pour the rest of your product, your, the rest of your uh, cookies in, your um, white chocolate. There we go, and then I'll pour this back into the machine. All right, looks pretty simple, doesn't it? <laughs> there we go. All right, so everything's in there. And that'll be done in a couple more minutes. Okay. I like to use these. Uh, you can use round tubs on the bigger machines, which Jeff will use today. These are gelato pans, and these are gelato pan inserts. Um, here is a gelato pan. And they're expensive. These are about $125, stainless steel. Uh, the inserts were designed to go in there, and then you put them into your cabinet. I find I don't need these at all. Um, I, can, I can just use the inserts, and I can usually get a couple of washings out of them, use them several times. But uh, very expensive. These come from a company called gelatosupply.com. Pretty easy name to remember. 
Now, the infinite overrun control is something I invented. It's now 14 years ago. And um, people wanted, uh, people were having to buy two batch freezers, uh, one to make uh, ice cream and the other one to make uh, lower air content products like gelato, haagen uh, custard. Well, I wanted to put it all into one machine, so I invented the infinite overrun control, which basically allows me to adjust the speed. That's okay, there's for us to eat. Okay. Um, working in reverse, if I put heavy cream into this container and stir it with a whisk, it's gonna remain heavy cream. If I take an electric mixer and put it in here, it's gonna become whipped cream. So the machine was originally set up to make whipped cream or high air content ice cream, which is what I prefer. Um, and so by slowing down the drive, we can make anything that has ever existed, anything that ever will exist. Um, and so it, it increased the versatility of the machine incredibly. So I don't think there's a machine leaving our factory today, almost, that doesn't have the infinite overrun control. So let's just check. Okay, that's almost ready. And uh, you can see my color is uh, coming just from the raspberries. Uh, no color added, no, no nothing extra. So with the infinite overrun control, I have, in the newer models, we have presets in there. We have homemade, super premium, uh, haagen uh, gelato, custard, uh, Italian ice, um, let's see, what else, sorbet, sorbetto, uh, there's a new one uh, we're going to make this afternoon, dairy-free ice cream, uh, which is an oxymoron, but it's going to be huge, or huge. And uh, so we've already preset it, plus there's an up and down arrow that you can manual. If you're an executive chef and you don't like that I've picked a certain speed for a product and you want it 10, 10 RPM lower, you can just slow it down 10 RPM. So instead of a machine that has one speed for freezing and a second speed for eject, which is what the Italians do, this one has uh, freezing through an entire range of, of different products. Yes? Can you change your free program speeds? Like you, you hit super premium. Mm -hmm. Could I change that program and make it a different speed? No, you can't change it, but you can manually do it. Oh, okay. You can say, I don't like his speed. No, it's not, not set up to program your own. Uh, but I've uh, been making ice cream for 42 years, and so I've set it for the speeds that I know are most effective for uh, custard, for gelato, uh, for all these different products. And nobody has this. Uh, 14 years, and no one has figured out how to do it. The, the main, without getting too up into the electronics of it, but if you have a, uh, a dining room and you want to dim the lights down to a nice low romantic level, you're taking the power away from the light bulbs. Um, and so when you do that, they're not 100 watt anymore, they're only 15 watt. If I took the power away from the drive motor, uh, instead of one horse and made it one eighth horsepower, it wouldn't be strong enough to pull through a liquid turning into a semi-solid. With this machine, no matter what speed I run at, I have the same pulling power, or what they call an automotive torque. I have the same strength that I do uh, across the board. This is ready, so I'm gonna turn this off. Uh, watch how fast this comes out, and I haven't even speeded it up to get it out, which I can do. I can take it up even faster. Isn't that beautiful? And that was all made from the supermarket. Now again, I haven't made this before, so we're gonna see how the proportions come out. That is a nice looking product. So if you don't mind starting to serve that, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll just stand here for the next year. Uh, so come I'm on not going to serve you. What? I don't know. Looks to me to be three. Looks to me to be. It looks good. Mm 
chips in there. So they remain chips or would they get Oh, that's more? good. They would remain chips, different sizes. Uh, one chips. thing I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't uh, take out the seeds. I think it, I think uh, raspberry should have seeds in it. It's part of what raspberry is. Yes, a question. Thank you. Yes, uh, you added vanilla. Mm -hmm. Was it powder or liquid? I didn't liquid. I used uh, liquid uh, two-fold vanilla. Okay. I used Lockhead vanilla, which is an excellent, excellent one. Now, after you try this, we'll ask you, what would you make different about it? Uh, keep in mind that when you make ice creams and gelatos, uh, the flavor enhances over the next 12 to 24 hours. So I have made vanilla for people, and they say, oh, it's really good, but it needs more vanilla extract. But you try it 12 hours later, and uh, the strength is, is uh, much improved. It's there. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. Is he from your class? Is he going to be oh, trouble God, all day? No. <laughs> no, no, no. Usually no. your people are trouble. So what do you think? How was it? Who would change something on it? Would you make anything stronger or uh, different? Yeah, Check I'd make it stronger. You would make it stronger? In yeah. what way? More, more raspberry. Is this raspberries? Yes. Raspberries aren't as strong as strawberries or blueberries, so I would add more raspberry. Okay. So... How much more would you increase from where that's at? Till I like it. I had, I had another 12 ounce bag ready to go into it in the formula, but it, it, it developed a leak, and so I didn't trust it. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I would probably add another 12 ounces of raspberries. That was my original thought too. Which would increase by one third or double? No, one third, because we already had the two boxes okay. Okay. And, and the bag. Girl.